Okay, in this video we're going to be working through the arteries of the thoracic limb and we'll be starting proximally with the axillary artery and continue distally. So here this large chunk that we see that has been transected is going to be the axillary artery. Usually the first branch off the axillary oftentimes gets cut or stretched out but the first branch that's coming off is coming right over here and coming right towards our superficial pectoral muscles. That's gonna be your external thoracic artery. We then have this artery right here that's kind of wrapping around and is gonna be coming caudally back towards the latissimus dorsi. That's gonna be your lateral thoracic artery. Here we also see this round structure that's going to be within the axilla, and that's the axillary lymph node. So if we reflect all of those out of the way, now we can see another very large branch of the axillary artery, and that's going to be the subscapular artery. Branches of the subscapular artery include the thoracodorsal artery, which is coming caudally back here to the latissimus dorsi. If we kind of reflect the subscapular caudally, we can see a very large artery that's piercing between the teres major and the subscapularis right on the caudal aspect of the joint capsule. That's gonna be the caudal circumflex humeral artery. And the subscapular artery will just continue up towards the dorsal border of the scapula. After the subscapular artery comes off, the axillary continues until you see this artery come off cranially, wrapping around the cranial aspect of the shoulder joint. That's gonna be the cranial circumflex humeral artery. After that artery comes off, the axillary transitions into the brachial artery. The first branch off the brachial artery is this large branch traversing caudally towards the triceps muscles, that is going to be the deep brachial artery. As we continue distally down the brachial artery, we then come to an artery that's moving caudally, again back towards the tricep muscles, but also the elbow joint itself. That's gonna be the collateral ulnar artery. I'm gonna switch legs real quick here because we have a really nice one that shows a nice bicipital. So just to reorient, we have our brachial artery. We have our collateral ulnar artery. And finally, you see this really nice artery coming directly off and going straight into the biceps brachii muscle. That's gonna be the bicipital artery. Now we'll trans uh, transfer back to the first limb that we were looking at and we see this artery would be coming off just distal to the bicipital and sometimes may e even be giving off the bicipital artery but this is the cranial or superficial brachial artery which is then going to come down here and give off a couple small little branches the cranial superficial antibrachial arteries. Now in this region as well, right on the cranial aspect of the elbow joint, if you reflect the brachial artery caudally, you can see this artery that's running transversely across the cranial aspect of the elbow. That's gonna be the transverse cubital artery. As you continue distally, now that we're in the antebrachium, we will come down here and find an artery that is going deep down towards the interosseous space, that's gonna be the common interosseous artery. The common interosseous gives off a caudally directed branch. That's gonna be the ulnar artery. And it's also going to give off an artery that's going to traverse just deep to this muscle here, which is the pronator quadratus muscle and that's gonna be the caudal interosseous muscle. At the point that the common interosseous branches from the brachial, distal to that, the brachial transitions to the median 
artery, median, not medial, median artery. The median artery will then give off some branches towards the flexor muscles on the medial aspect. That's going to be the deep antibrachial artery. And finally, the median artery will continue distally and will give off in the dog a fairly small, here you see the vein and artery together. This is the radial artery and vein. The median artery will continue down through the carpal canal and traverse all the way distally to the palmar aspect of the limb, creating this structure here. Again, we can see a nice median artery traversing distally and creating that superficial palmar arch. We'll look at the few veins that we like for you to know on the thoracic limb. So just to orient you, we're looking at the lateral and cranial aspects of the thoracic limb. We see this blue latex vein traveling dorsally over the carpus. That is going to be the accessory cephalic vein. Next, we see this vein that's coming from the medial aspect of the carpus and anastomosing with the accessory cephalic. That is going to be the cephalic vein. The cephalic vein traverses proximally up the cranial aspect of the antebrachium. And at the elbow, it will give off a branch moving to the medial aspect. That's going to be the median cubital vein. The cephalic continues proximally until it kind of gives off. The cephalic will actually go deep to your cleidobrachialis muscle. That's this one right here. And it will continue around the lateral aspect of the shoulder in, as the axillobrachial vein. The axillobrachial vein at the point of the shoulder will then give off this small vein running laterally and superficially over the acromial part of the deltoideus muscle, and that's going to be the omobrachial vein. The axillobrachial vein will then dive deep to the scapular part of your deltoideus.